Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, <clears throat> thank you for your time today. I'm uh, obviously a 2016 Nuffield Scholar and in organic banana produ production in North Queensland. On my Nuffield adventure, I was looking to find answers around how we as banana farmers can achieve a higher return on investment. To do this, I looked at ways to increase value through branding. I feel very privileged to be here today and would not have been possible without my sponsors and the support network from home. I would like to thank Nuffield Australia for giving me a go. My family, mum, dad, Ben and Kate, <coughs> none of this would have been possible without your unconditional support. My wife Naomi, <coughs> you were the one who backed me into having a go and supported me the whole way. At times this has made our relationship very colourful. <laughs> thank, thank you for your support. Thank you to my sponsors, AB. GC and HRO, this would not have been possible without your financial backing. I would also like to thank our farm staff. We have a really great group of people that we work with and none of this would have been possible without each and every one of them. We farm in an area um, about one hour south of Cairns called Innisfar. Uh, it's a family owned and operated business. I work with my brother Ben and father Robert on farm as well as my mother Jenny wife Naomi and sister-in-law sister Kate, who are in the background holding everything together. A family business <coughs> can be challenging at times, but would definitely not be where we are without them. We are third generation on our family farm, which was originally dairy. But in 1983, Dad saw the light and planted <coughs> bananas. And in the early 2000s, we moved into organic production. Earlier this year, we purchased another farm, and now between the two farms, we operate with around 15 employees. We grow about 150 acres, which produce around 2,500 tonnes of bananas a year. We market into New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria and South Australia, and our second grade produce is sold locally. Nearly all bananas grown in Australia are sold on the domestic market, and the industry is in a period of oversupply. The previous two years have been record production, 15-16, we produced around 393,000 tonnes, and in 16-17, increased to 414,000. Production has increased, but as you can see, value has decreased. We are essentially growing more and getting paid less. 94% of Australian households buy fresh bananas and consume around 16 kilos per person per year. This is quite high. This leaves lim limited potential to increase further domestic consumption. The challenge for us farmers is how to increase returns in this saturated market. So how do we increase value? During my travel, <coughs> I visited Japan, Italy, Spain, and in the US went to Florida and California. The week in California was actually our honeymoon. <laughs> Some would say visiting farms may not be ideal. I would argue that point. <laughs> I've I've visited producers, marketers, universities, and numerous retailers. I was looking at branding and packaging in supermarkets. I was especially interested in retail displays and to see how products are branded, the number of lines and, and categories available, and the price differences. Also, I looked at new tech, was interested in looking at new technology in regarding to branding, export opportunities, and value adding. In Japan, a lot of produce was in plastic packaging driven by food safety and convenience. Plastic packaging has been a part of the Japanese culture for a long time, but they do recycle 70% of their plastic waste, which is considerably higher than most other countries. It was one of the things that really impressed me the most about Japan was how clean it was, and um, it just really blew me away. The average retail price per banana was around a dollar. Everything was branded and was commonly branded by farm or provenance. The bananas are packed either individually or in clusters of three or four bananas. The bananas on the middle shelf are actually from Australia and were the most, the most expensive in the shop. This is a very good example of product branding. They have six different product lines, some even from the same company, five different price points, and they're all essentially Cavendish bananas. And some of these lines were up to 75% more in price. Branding was, used, branding was used to highlight difference in taste, ripeness, size and quality. These qualities are what Japanese consumers see value in. 
Interesting that taste is so important. Comparing that to Australia, where the majority of bananas are unbranded and limited emphasis on taste. A good example of this is when looking at the supermarket specs for the big retailers, taste and flavour do not get a look in. Often you will hear growers say we are in the business of growing skins and the fruit is just a bonus. Like Japan, the majority of bananas sold in the US are branded. The US use, use mostly tape and stickers to do this, or both. Organic and conventional Cavendish were the two main lines in store. However, they also were selling two to three niche varieties. Niche varieties and organic received a price premium. Niche varieties 50% more and organic 30% more. The take home message from Japan and USA was that branding is very important to identify your product and increase value. However, in our organic business, we are conscious of playing our part and looking after the environment and not creating additional packaging waste. Therefore, I don't believe any of the branding examples would be suitable for our organic business. Bananas in their natural form have many advantages, the two big ones being convenience and already in an environmentally friendly package. As farmers, we are a very important part of the food chain. We grow safe, healthy food for the rest of the population to eat. At times, we undervalue what we do. It is important we start to recognise the value of what we add and what makes our product unique. The challenge for our business is how do, we, how do we brand our product and how do we get value from what we do. In Spain I met with Stefan Merritt of Laser Foods to look at new technology of laser printing on fruit. Laser uses light to mark without damaging the skin of the banana or the pulp inside. The machine also has artificial vision for identifying the area to be marked. Another key point is the application can be done on farm. This is important for the farmer to be the one adding and receiving the value. It allows branding directly onto the product, which removes the need for added packaging. The photo on the left shows how it is only marked on the very surface of the skin. It almost looks like it's been printed on. A system to support the laser technology for bananas has not been fully developed. Another challenge for this technology is to adapt the process within the packing shed to suit. How the marking works. When, it initially, when initially marked, it is barely visible, as you can see on the right. And then gradually the image gets darker, as in the picture on the left. The size of the brand will impact the time it takes to mark. On the right, the font is in normal text and took 0.1 of a second to mark, and in the left, the text is in bold and took 1.2 seconds to mark. Similar to, similar to laser, ink does not use packaging to brand. The ink is edible, which is very important for food safety and quality assurance standards. A print head with an electronic eye senses a fruit which triggers the printer to mark. Quite a simple yet effective system. Challenges with this are developing a system to support application and adapting it to current packing systems and ensuring the ripening process doesn't affect the ink integrity. And we are currently doing trials with this in our shed at the moment. I spent a day with Rabobank Vice President and Senior Analysis Roland Fermasi in California. He indicated the importance of convenience for consumers when considering product choice. They will choose environmentally sustainable, sustainable packaging before purchasing a product without packaging. Two features of the tomato packaging pictured here is that it's both recycled and biodegradable. And it still hits the mark of being convenient for consumers. It still has plastic on the cover, but they have greatly reduced the amount of plastic. Rosa Brothers, who are a family-owned business in California, in recent years started marketing their own milk rather than selling into a dairy group. They created a brand focusing on high quality. They use glass bottles to package their milk, which have a dual purpose of being perceived as higher quality and also environmentally sustainable. Customers return empty bottles to store for a discount on their next purchase. Rosa Brothers then collect, wash and reuse the glass bottles. This is a good example of a packing system that supporting their product and adding value. The online space is something that kept coming up in my travels. I didn't really realise uh, how big it was until 
uh, until I did start to travel. Obviously, Amazon is a big player in this area, so I decided to go straight to the top and talk to Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Turns out he did not reply to the three emails I sent him. <laughs> and watching online interviews of him was as close as I got. He talks about convenience, price, and selection being key areas of focus, which over time remain a constant driver for consumer behavior. As fresh sales now are also coming online, this could really be a game changer for the way food is sold. Already we have started to see the Australian retailers move into this space. With the logistical expertise behind these kind of companies, it is very hard to ignore the signs, and this has the ability to really turn things on its head. Online selling also has the potential to remove the need to physically brand the product, as the brand could be advertised online. So essentially, bananas could skip over finding a process to physically brand and move straight into an online presence. I met with Ben Senior and Ben Junior from Uncle Matt's Organics. These guys were in the citrus industry and are involved in both fresh and processed production. Their company focused on high quality and consistency. They developed a brand and are now able to demand a premium over their competitors. They also maximise their waste by having multiple products, premium fresh fruit, oil they, which they extract from the, the skin and premium fruit juice. Ben Senior told me that he often goes to the shops and watches consumers. He said that what the big thing he notices about the customers is that they bought, that buy his juice is they don't even look at the price. He said they scan the shelves, find his brand, grab the bottle and keep moving. This, is a, this was also a very good example of the power of branding and increasing value. They put a huge emphasis on growing a high quality product, but also put a lot of effort into their brand and image. As farmers, we often just focus on growing. It's important we look at the growing, but also the marketing sides of our business to have a, to have a real opportunity to increase value. There are clearly high value and low value products which bananas could be used for. Some of the examples are highlighted above. Banana flour, which has been developed in North Queensland by a banana grower, is a very good example of increasing value. Besides that, other banana products are puree, which is used in drinks, bases for drinks, baby products, children's snacks, and flavor additives. And whole banana pieces used in frozen and dried and powder for baby products. In Italy, I met with Fratelli and Delicato, a company that makes tropical fruit processing equipment. They have developed a banana peeler to be used in making puree. The machine gets around a 55% recovery rate. The pulp then goes through another machine to separate out the small pieces of skin that end up in the pulp. As mentioned at the start of the presentation, our fresh domestic banana market is oversupplied. Therefore, export markets have huge potential to provide new market opportunities. These opportunities may be in fresh or value added, but we need to focus on high end high, and high value to compensate for our higher production costs. However, Australia has an advantage over their competitors. We are seen as having, or we have high, very high levels of food safety, very high quality standards, we're reliable and trustworthy. The Australian brand is strong and well respected around the world. The middle class in Asia is growing at a phenomenal rate. With Asia's close proximity and food quality issues, this presents real opportunity for us. There are lots of good examples of Australian industries already doing this. I believe there is an opportunity for the Australian banana industry to develop new export markets. The importance of branding is a key point I've taken out of my studies. Whether it be physical or online, it is key to link the farmer to the consumer. We need to take advantage of the technology that's out there. We're in the most exciting era of agricultural technology. There are already tractors that can drive on their own, robots to pick apples, and who knows, <coughs> hell, who knows, maybe it won't be long before they will even invent a machine to peel a whole banana. The, te the technology is there and is improving every day. It is exciting to think what banana farming and processing in Australia will look like in five to 10 years time. Working together as farmers is something that does not come easily. Often we see each other as competitors in our own markets. However, on the world stage, we are a small industry in terms of banana production. Therefore, I believe 
We as an industry need to work together to capitalise on the opportunities in new export markets. The underlying message from my trouble is we as farmers must value what we do. We grow safe, healthy, nutritious food for people to eat. We need to share our story with consumers so they too can see the value in the products we produce. This photo was taken in Qatar after a four-wheel drive tour in a flash V8 Land Cruiser wagon with the Persian Gulf in the background. <laughs> this whole experience <clears throat> has been very life-changing for me. The friends I've made, the places we travel to, and the experiences we shared. This I'll never forget. <clears throat> and thank you from the bottom of my heart. <clears throat> this, <clears throat> this scholarship has shown a lot more at me than I was ready for, and on several occasions left me questioning my decision making on entering the Nuffield program. <laughs> It has also given me much more than I could have ever imagined and has forever changed my perspective on life. Thank you to all the people I've visited on my travel and thanks again to everyone who has supported me along the way. <laughs>